Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I am a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the using the master password learning byte. All right, so what is the master password feature for? Well, it's all about hardening shared secrets. So currently without this feature, shared secrets in Junos are in the dollar sign nine dollar sign format and it uses an obfuscation algorithm to hide the password. And this is going to be shared secrets such as a radius password, IKE, pre-shared keys, and other things. As you might know, you can take one of these passwords from one SRX device or one Junos device and decrypt it on a different, completely unrelated Junos device. And that's, that's not a good thing. So we want to avoid that. We can use the master password that uses the dollar sign eight dollar sign format and it uses an AES 256 GCM algorithm to encrypt configuration secrets and the master password is not saved as a part of the configuration. And the example on the slide shows that the master password is being used as input to the PBKDF2 function to generate an encryption key. This key is then used as the input for the AES 256 GCM algorithm. Then at the bottom of the slide, this shows that the plain text that the user enters is processed by the encryption algorithm with key to produce the encrypted ciphertext. All right, so we do need to talk about the TPM module. And so what is this? TPM module is used to bind secrets. And TPM stands for Trusted Platform Module. And this is something found on the SRX series devices. So what happens here is the software layer leverages and uses the underlying TPM chip. And this chip is specialized to protect certain secrets, such as private keys, system master passwords, and other sensitive data by storing this data in an AES-256 encrypted format. And keep in mind that it generates a new SHA-256 hash for the configuration each time that a commit happens. And then the hash is verified against the config each time the system boots. So if the configuration has been tampered with, the verification fails, the device will not continue to boot. And the last thing I want to point out is that this feature is supported on the SRX 300 series, you can see on the slide, and the SRX 5000 series. Now keep in mind that the SRX 300 series has the TPM chip built in. However, with the SRX 5000 series, it's going to be built into the RE. So you need to make sure if you're using an SRX 5000 series and you want to use this feature, that the RE that you're using has the TPM chip in it. All right, so here is our example. And we have a few different devices in this example. We have SRX1, which is the device we will be configuring. And then we have an IPsec pair and a radius server. Now with the IPsec pair, there's a shared password that we'll see in IKE. And with the radius server, there's also a shared password. And those passwords are currently stored in the dollar sign nine dollar sign format. And we want to change that so they're stored in the dollar sign eight dollar sign format. And we can do that using the master password feature. So with that, let's go ahead and jump to the SRX1 device and get this going. So first, let's look at those passwords. See, we have a radius server configured. And there's a shared secret using that dollar sign nine dollar sign format that is not terribly secure because what we can do here is we can use the request system decrypt password command and then paste in this password and we could do this on this device or any other Junos device. And it's going to give us a plain text output of what that password is. You can see that's Juniper EDU services. That's not great. We want to avoid that. We can use the master password function to avoid that. So first thing we want to check is we want to check the status of the TPM module. And we can see that it is currently enabled and there's already a master password created. And that's because I already have it running on this device, but we can change the password and it would be very similar if we were setting it up from the ground up. So to change the password or to set a new password, you need to issue the request security TPM master password set plain text command. And then here it's prompting me to enter the current password. That's because I already have a password. And if you didn't have this configured, then it would just prompt you to create a new password. So I'm entering my current password. That's accepted. Going to enter a new password and re enter that password. And we can see here, we get some output that shows us that there was binding of the password to the TPM module and that the master encryption password is bound to it. 
and successfully generate and save TPM encrypted hash of config file and encrypted key pair files. And so great, that's what we want to see. So we've created it. The next thing we need to do is we need to set it in the configuration. Set system master password. And it wants us to enter the master password here. So this is the password that we just created. I'm going to enter that. And then it wants to repeat the password. And it gives us some interesting warnings. First tells us that our radius server password is weak. And it recommends that we should make that stronger. And then it, same thing with the IKE password. And that's OK. You know, we could change that, but we don't have to. It still goes through OK. So I want to show. Show the radius server. Now we can see that's in dollar sign eight dollar sign. And I didn't show this earlier, but wanted to show that IKE policy has the pre shared key in the dollar sign eight dollar sign format. So then after that, we just need to commit the configuration. So now what happens if we try to decrypt those passwords on this device? I guess I actually have to enter the password. Well, let's first look at the password so I can get that really quick. And then let's decrypt it. And it wants us to input the master password. And we get the plain text output when we enter the master password. Now, if we did this unrelated device and entered the master password, it would actually work. But you have to know that master password. That master password is with that shared secret. So now we have our shared secrets protected using the master password feature. So that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrated how to configure the master password feature. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.